welcome to the Methodist Church Guyana District's Divine Worship. We are happy that you have joined us today. The Methodist Church Guyana District is one of eight districts that comprise the Methodist Church in the Caribbean and the Americas. There are six circuits that make up the Guyana District, Burbese, Essequibo, Friendship, Georgetown, Mahaika, and West Demerara, with the United Mission, Linden, as an associate church. The president of the Guyana District is Bishop the Reverend Taslin Kofia Niles. The secretary of the district conference is Reverend Mervyn Ossie Austin, while the treasurer of the district funds is Miss Yolanda Abiola James. The mission of our church is spreading scriptural holiness for the reformation of the nation, while our district theme reads renewed in Christ for service and witness.
Our help is in the name of the Lord our God, who made heaven and earth. Our salvation is in the Lord Jesus Christ, who died for our sins and rose for our justification. Our confidence is in the Holy Spirit, who enables us to become God's children. The Lord reigns, let the earth rejoice. Our God reigns, we shall be glad and wait for his word. Let us now sing the hymn of praise, Love Divine, or Love Excelling, number 254 in the Voices in Praise. sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, 
by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Please receive the assurance of pardon. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Here's then the good news. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Thanks be to God. We will now like to invite the Trinity's praise team to lead us in a time of praise and worship. Give me joy in my heart.
Dear Lord, we thank you for the many ways you bless our lives. We know that every good gift comes from your hands. And even though life is not always good, you are good all the time. We are grateful for your love and faithfulness and for meeting our every need. Please bless and keep safe all who we hold dear. May we live with an attitude of gratitude each day and never take anything for granted. We thank you for Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. We will now go into the ministry of the Word. Let us pray the collect. Eternal God, as Mary waited for the birth of your Son, so we wait for his coming in glory. Bring us through the part bands of this present age to see with her. Our great salvation in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Old Testament reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 7, verses 10 to 16. Here beginneth the reading. Again the Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Shehal, our highest heaven. But he has said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary mortals, that you weary my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child, and shall be her son, and shall name him Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land before whose two kings you are in dread and will be deserted. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I would all like to invite you to stand as we sing the hymn, What Shall I Do My God to Love?
now have the reading of the gospel. Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 25, followed by the sermon, which will be delivered by Reverend Judy Patterson. The gospel is according to Matthew chapter 1, reading verses 18 to 25. Glory to you, O God. The birth of Jesus, the Messiah. Now the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, took place in this way when his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph. But before they lived together, she was found to be a child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what has been spoken through the prophet. Look, the virgin Mary shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from the sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had born a son, and he named him Jesus. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise be to Christ. Brothers and sisters, I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. As we go to God for this message, his word, I bring to you the team, signs of love. God is with us. And our main text is taken from Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. Look. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for blessing us in the songs that were sung, the hymns and choruses, in the word that was read. And we pray even now as we prepare to listen to you O oh God, that self within each one of us will decrease and your Holy Spirit will take full control and let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Over the last three weeks of Advent, we have heard messages that reinforce on matters relating to the coming of our Lord Jesus and what he brings to us and expects us to do for him. In him, we have hope and peace and joy. The joyous hope of restoration whereby our faith could be restored, our strength restored, our confidence restored, our joy restored as we watch and wait for the coming of the Lord and fulfill His promise in us. We have heard that as God's people, we are to be channels of peace, to have that peace which passeth all understanding and to live in peace with our brothers and sisters. Also, we were reminded that comes from God is love. As we travel on this highway, on this journey with him, we must keep looking for a time when we will experience total joy, when weeping and sighing shall be no more. We look forward for those times. On this fourth Lord's Day of Advent, 
Our focus will be on love. As God comes to us, we are prepared to love him with all our hearts, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And we are called to love our neighbors as ourselves. Today, we know that Jesus is with us and his Holy Spirit moves among us and he moves us to that place where we can love him and love each other. The Bible is not void of stories that tells about men and women who express genuine love for each other and for God. We are given the example today of Mary and Joseph. And let us consider the signs of love demonstrated in their lives as we go through this message today. The word love is commonly used by many to express that closeness of relationship between people. It is considered to be an action word in the sense that one must not just say, I love you, but one must demonstrate by his or her action that he or she truly loved that other person. How often we have heard stories where persons say they love each other. When problems arose, they separate from each other. What manner of love is that? God calls us to a higher love relationship. We are aware of stories in the Bible and some of our communities where people, uh, couples met and fell in love. And within short periods, they, that love dies. Love in the Bible is categorized by three Greek words. The agape, the highest form of love, whereby one loves something or loves someone and place high value on that person or object. The filial or friendly brotherly love and the heroes, the romantic love. The love being considered in our message today is that a copy love. Love which denotes a loving and caring relationship shared by God and should be shared among the people of God. In Matthew chapter 1 verses 18 to 25, we read that Joseph and Mary were betrothed but not yet married when Mary told Joseph that she was pregnant. History tells that in those days there were three stages in the Jewish marriages. First, the engagement, which was often arranged by the parents through a matchmaker. When the boy and the girl were children, and then secondly, the betrayal which was a formal ratification of the marriage to be usually that was done a year before the couple was married. Then finally, the wedding itself, which lasted for about a week. Thereafter, the marriage was consummated. It was during the betrothal period, the couple was legally bound to each other so that in the event the man dies before the actual wedding took place, the woman was considered to be a widow. They were actually referred to as husband and wife, though they refrained from having any sexual relation. It was at that stage, Joseph was told by Mary that she was pregnant, not for him, but had been overshadowed by the Holy Spirit and was in child. We could imagine the state of shock that Joseph was in, the way he was hurt. That seems like a horror story. There is no way that any man would just quietly accept such news. Very few men will not be angry 
or severely hurt by a news like that. Recently, I heard of a married couple who fatally injured each other because of hearing the news of infidelity. How did Joseph or the husband-to-be, any husband-to-be, took such news? We render the angel of the Lord visited Joseph in a dream. And God, through that angel, spoke to Joseph, leading him to have a change of heart, I believe. Truly, God's spirit can bring about a change in situation. A simple carpenter from Nazareth would have had many friends. And I believe because of his occupation, you know, they would have so surrounded him, having heard such news. And so many would have encouraged him to react to such a situation. Mary, too, on the other hand, seems to be an honorable, respectable and quiet spirited person. We saw her readiness to inquire of God and to obey him in Mary's predicament and in Joseph's situation. They seek God and they were attentive and obedient to his man. The Bible didn't say that Mary was prepared to go into hiding. But it mentioned that she was prepared to bear that child, Emmanuel, God with us, despite her circumstances. Mary responded to the angel when she was told of her pregnancy by saying, let it be with me according to your word. A statement of obedience to God. The question is, what was the writer of the gospel trying to tell believers at this stage or in that account of Mary? Earlier in the chapter, Matthew outlined Jesus' parentage and birth, confirming that Jesus came from the line of David. Matthew addresses matters related both to women and men and non-Jewish community. Whereas other biblical writers, genealogies primarily addressed or include the male person or males. Today, we are familiar with some important roles that the women played in society, both in the secular job as well as in the ministry of the gospel. Some of us are familiar with the story of the mother of our founder leader, Susanna Wesley, who by God's grace trained the two greatest preachers in England in the 18th century, John and Charles Wesley. However, we still have persons and people within various environments where they marginalized women, where they mistreat our women folks. Christians, believers, we are called to follow in Jesus' example, even as much you try to propel that women must be treated fairly. We saw it, Jesus, he was compassionate to women and children. He was caring for all people. And here in this story, we also note how Joseph was a loving and caring person to his family. Let us consider, therefore, what are some of the signs of love or signs demonstrated in this virgin story as God declared to Mary and to Joseph. And I wish to consider three. There might be many more, but I wish to bring to us three important factors about this virgin story. The first, love, trust and obedience. When God is among men, 
as he was with Joseph and Mary, and will be by extension with us as children of God. We are called or we are moved to love and obedience, a sign of children of God, a sign among the children and believers of God. We must demonstrate this love, even as Joseph and Mary did demonstrate their obedience to God. Mary and Joseph faced many challenges, including rejection by the society or rejection by family members. Verse 19 of the text tells that Joseph was a righteous man. We may also believe that as a skilled craftsman, as a carpenter, he would have many friends, and, but and at that stage, uh, been preparing for marriage, he would have worked tirelessly to prepare for his family. It was why this grand preparation was being made for marriage. He was confronted with a shocking news that his wife-to-be was pregnant. But what did Joseph do? We are told in verse 24 that Joseph did as the Lord commanded, meaning that he continued to love God, he continued to love Mary, even as the Holy Spirit God was with him, enabling him to show that love and care for family. Many men would have not done that. But we are prepared as Christians to love in such situation. When situations turn around among us, we are still to rely on God and trust and obey Him. Joseph and Mary trusted the Lord under those circumstances. They obeyed God. They believed in Him. They believed that this Savior had a plan for their lives. And even so, the God that we serve, He has a plan for our lives. But we need to what? Be obedient to His command. We know that He commanded us in the world, to love him with all our heart, our soul, our mind and strength, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. When we so love, when we so have God within us, we are prepared to be obedient. We are prepared to do the things that God wants us to do. He is the one to help us. When God is with us, he can make us be different. He can make us love in such a way that he wants us to love. Secondly, when God is with us and God is with us, he gives us that spirit of fruit bearing. We are called to bear fruit. In verses 24 and 25 tells that Joseph took Mary as his wife, as the Lord commanded him, but had no marital relationship until she had bore Jesus. Consider the love, consider the patience that they both would have had, you know, to refrain from any sexual relationship during that period of time by the Holy Spirit and God being with them, they were able. It is so difficult for persons, you know. It is sometimes so difficult for couples to wait for the wedding day after they are engaged to have sexual relationship. But the scripture tells that Joseph and Mary waited until after Jesus was born to have a sexual relationship. The Holy Spirit is the enabler. The Holy Spirit can help you young people to keep your virginity, 
to keep yourself by yourself, you cannot do it. But we know that with the help of God and with His Holy Spirit, He can help you when God is with us. He enables and He helps us through every situation as He did to Joseph and Mary. Mary exhibited love and joy and humility, proof of the Spirit. When she shared the exciting news of our conception with her cousin Elizabeth, it was obvious that the presence of Jesus Christ caused her to rejoice and the presence of Jesus Christ with us will cause us to rejoice in Him. As the Bible and the Word says, rejoice in the Lord always. And I say to you again, rejoice. When God is with us, He causes us to rejoice. When the Spirit of the Lord is upon us, when we have that fruit, and when we are bearing fruit, we will exhibit love and, and joy and peace. And all that is described in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Christians, my sisters and brothers, we ought to tap in on the Holy Spirit. We ought to realize that God is with us. And he is the one to enable us to exhibit the proof of the Spirit. I read a book entitled Hearts of Love. The story is told of a young man who became paralyzed at the age of 21 due to an accident on his job. The young man spent many years immobile until he discovered the Bible promise of good health. After that young man meditated on the word of God, he had the conviction that God in his power will be able to heal and restore him. He trusted God. He acquired the spirit of God to exercise faith in God. He read his Bible, he meditated, and he was taken to that place where he can have that hope and trust in God. And with the help of the present Holy Spirit upon him, the story is told that eventually he was able to walk. Eventually, he began to have sensitivity force in his toes, his fingers, and gradually he experienced walking. But the point is that he trusted and he believed that the Spirit of God was upon him and the Spirit of God was able to enable and help him to move from one state to another. The Spirit of God upon us will help us to exhibit all the fruit of the Spirit and help us in our witnesses. We know and we have already uh, mentioned, I have already mentioned that Joseph and Mary trusted the Lord. Joseph and Mary were, were obedient to God. Joseph and Mary were filled with the Holy Spirit and because of that they were able to get the strength that was desired to go on in trusting the Lord. The third and final consideration with regards to signs of love and God is with us. It's one that brings to us courage or overcoming fear. Verse 20 of the text tells us and it states, but just when Joseph had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. Of course, God recognized the fear in Joseph and Mary. And we all can experience or we all will experience fear at some time as we journey along this road. However, 
We should note that all fears were gone when God reassured Joseph through the angel that he ought not to be afraid. And he's saying to us as believers, as Christians, that no matter what our circumstances may be, your situations may be, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. God will sustain. God will hope uphold you. Most of us or all of us may experience fear and anxiety when we become aware of the danger or when we have emotional distress. We are not free as Christians from emotional distress. We are not free from fear, but we can be assured that God promised never to leave us. And he promised that he will be with us. And so we ought to take this fear because he's in us. All right, to take courage and to venture out wherever he commanded us to go or wherever he commands us to go. We learned later in scriptures that as Joseph and Mary faced threats of their baby being killed by Herod, who felt that his kingship was threatened because of the birth of Jesus, Joseph took that courage with the help of God and the Holy Spirit to move and to safeguard and to protect his family. Thereby, he moved to Egypt for a period of time, and you can read that story in Matthew chapter 2, verse 13. The Bible shows us many examples of men and women who were under threats, and their lives were threatened, but they trusted in God. They believed in God. We can be recall Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were thrown into the burning furnace, according to Daniel 3. We were told of Daniel in the lion's den. Daniel 6, we were told of Zarephath, of Sidon, that poor widow who God took care of in 1 Kings 17. And so my sisters and my brother, in the midst of fearful situation, we are to trust God. In the midst of fearful situation, like Joseph and Mary, who God was with, we must trust and obey, and he will help us to overcome all fear. The psalmist says, we can trust God to give us courage in times when we are fearful, Psalm 56, 3. In conclusion, let us be reminded that when God is with us, and he will be with us when we call upon him, when we accept him as our Lord and Savior, he promised never to leave us. When God is with us, he will help us to be obedient his God. There will be obedience and love, continued love. He will give us the heart of love. When God is with us, he will empower us and give us gifts of the Holy Spirit so that we will exhibit those gifts of love and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. When God is with us, he will help us to overcome fear. Are you experiencing God's presence with you? Are you living in the power of the Holy Spirit? As you are aware, Jesus came many, many years ago. Today we celebrate his coming in this season and we are to celebrate him each and every day and know that he comes to us each and every day in various ways we are called to trust him and so my sisters let us continue to love and to obey god 
Let's continue to keep his commanded me and even as he's commanded. Let us love him with all our hearts, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And let us love one another. And let us know that he's able to help us to love even when situation seems unlovable. God is love. And he has given us the best gift of love in the person of Jesus Christ. We give him thanks for that gift of love. That gift of love which is transformed in us and help us to be like the lights shining out for Jesus. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, today we once again recognize that you have given us the greatest gift, the gift in the person of your son, Jesus Christ. And as Mary and Joseph experience your presence among them, so help us to know that you are with us. Help us to love and to trust and obey you. Help us to know that as we live this life and as we journey on with you, you call us to love our neighbors as ourselves. Dear God, we know that we cannot do it unless you come and dwell in us. So empower us even now we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to stand as we affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. We now go into our renewal of fellowship, notices, and announcements. On behalf of Bishop T. Kofi and Niles, our district president, and the district staff, I take this opportunity to wish you and your family a peaceful and reflective Lord's Day, as well as a blessed week under God's protection and care. We thank you for joining us from your various locations here as well as overseas. We give thanks for those who are celebrating birthdays, wedding anniversaries, or any other special milestone during this week. May God's richest blessings continue to rest upon you. In all things, give thanks. Do remember to share in the candlelight services ongoing at your various congregations and remember to join us ne next week Sunday at 900 hours for another time of online worship. Bible study continues this Wednesday on the Zoom platform at 17.30 hours. Let us continue to pray for and with each other as we ask God's intervention in our time of need. Remember to show the love of Jesus Christ by reaching out through phone calls or text messages, as well as tangible gifts where possible. Do show extra concern for the elderly and those who live by themselves. God bless us all. We are now going to a time of prayers of intercession and the Lord's Prayer following. Let us pray for this our country, Guyana. Almighty God, please be in the midst 
as we experience unrest in sections of our country, as we experience, oh God, in some sector, women and men being treated fair unfairly. We pray, oh God, for our children, that you, oh God, may so safeguard them. We pray of our young people, oh God, that you will help them to make informed choices. Protect us and protect our dear land. Drive away divisions and help us, oh God, to look to you. Provide for all those who are lacking, those who are in need, and bless us all. This we pray. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Father, we pray for our sake and shut in, and for those who are experiencing loss of loved ones. We pray for all who suffer pain or sickness, loneliness, fear. Lord, strengthen and be with them. Help them to experience you in a state of unwell, in a state, O oh God, of anxiety. In whatever other state they may be, O oh God, visit them, we pray. Gracious God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And even as you taught us to pray, together we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We will now have our closing hymn, so please stand as we sing Joy to the World. Number 6 to 5 in the Voices in Praise.
And now, with the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever.